Okay, let's begin by breaking down what we need to do in this game. We obviously need to make these assets, which can be made using simple vector graphics. And these UI texts are not a big deal. We can use Unity Text or Text Mesh Pro for this. And this parallel thing rotates around the center. Now, there are many ways to do this, but I think there's a method in Unity called Rotate Around, which might be useful. And there's also this dot thing spawning around the paddle, so we'll have to do some sort of random spawn as well. When the player taps, we need to somehow check if the paddle is on the dot or not. And that's how we get the win or lose state. And the game over screen is interesting. When the player misses the dot, the screen turns red and the lock wobbles a bit. And the win state is even more complex. The lock opens up and then slides off to the left and then slides back in from the right. And that's how we get the new level. I think these can be done by Unity Animation. And yeah, that's the summary of it. Uh, we'll sort some minor stuff as we go. So let's start creating the art assets for the game. I'm using Illustrator since I'm not sure if I'll have to scale the art later. So having vector shapes is quite useful for that. Let's use the ellipse tool for the base of the lock and also create a rounded rectangle for the paddle. The important thing when designing your assets is to make sure that the proportions are correct. And uh, that's why I'm using 9 by 16 artboard similar to a mobile screen. And also I keep checking the overall composition once in a while. For the dot, I'll create a simple circle and adjust the colors of paddle and lock base a bit. Now let's make the locks upper part, which is called a hat in the actual game. I'll use another rounded rectangle for this and I'll cut the bottom part. I'm keeping this hat separate from the base so we can animate them separately in Unity. And once the pieces are finalized, I'll collect them for export and just export them at 1x. And I'm just gonna rename the files properly. Now in Unity, let's create an empty project and set up the camera's background color and then import our art assets that we created. I'm just gonna adjust the pixels per unit for the sprites and then we'll set up our game view. Now we need to make sure that the order in layer is adjusted properly so our lock hat, that's the top part, is always behind the lock base. I also downloaded a custom font which I'll import here and set up some basic UI for now. I'm thinking of adding TextMesh Pro for the UI, which looks way more sharper. But for now, let's just use the normal Unity text. By the way, if your font looks blurry, you can always play around with the font settings. Let's set up the basic level counter UI here. Uh, this looks about right. I'll duplicate it once more to make the stars counter. And let's also add a tag called anchor. This will be used later for our paddle system. And I'll set our log base with this tag. I'll also parent all these stuff to a common game object called lock. This parent object will actually hold most of our main animation. And adjust the positioning of each object a bit. Now let's create our paddle system. So the way this system will work is that the paddle object will keep a reference to an anchor game object, which we'll find by tag. And that's why we added the tag to our lock base object. And then just use Unity's rotate around method to move around this anchor. I'll add a new component called anchored motor and this motor will have a speed variable and also a special anchor transform. In the start, we can search for the object with the anchor tag and then in the update, we'll use Unity's rotate around method to move around this anchor object. You can see that the paddle rotates around the center, which is our log base and tagged as anchor. We should also make this motor direction a variable. So let's declare a new enum called direction, uh, which will only have two values, clockwise and anti-clockwise. And then I'll add the direction variable in my paddle, which I'll multiply in our rotation. And we also need to cast this down to an int to make it work. And if you test now, you'll see that the direction is reversed. So we just need to multiply a negative one to fix this issue. Okay, that's done. So the original pop the log game also has a remaining dot counter text in the middle. So let's create that. And one more thing here is to make sure that the paddle sorting order is always above the dots so it appears over the dot, not under it. 
Great, so we have completed our base setup. Now we can start to work on other game features. Let's replace our UI with the TextMesh Pro package. I'll search for the asset on store and import it in the project. I'll then create a new TextMesh Pro object and adjust the positioning and play around with the values. I'm testing with a large number here as I don't want the text to overflow uh, in the later stages of the game. In the original game, this remaining text always moves with the lock while animating. So we need to make this a child of our lock and I'll rename it. One point to note here is that if you're using TextMesh Pro, you can't just drop a font on the text. You need to create a special font asset. And TextMesh Pro library provides a tool for this. You can find that in the top window menu. You can drop your font in it and generate the font asset. Once you have the asset, you can drop it on the text. And in the actual game, the text seems to be a bit transparent. So I'll reduce the text opacity a bit. Now I'll just repeat the process for the level text and the stars text UI. And that's it, it was simple. We have just migrated our UI to TextMesh Pro. So let's focus again on the anchored motor for now. We need to change the direction of the motor when the player taps. So I'll create a method for that. And inside that I'll put a switch on the direction and just reverse it. And now in the update, we can check for the tap or mouse down key and just change the direction. You might also notice that the paddle starts moving as soon as the game loads, which is not what we want. So let's put a Boolean check whether the game is running or not and only rotate if it's true. And when we tap for the first time and the game is not running, we want to start the game. And now the paddle only starts when we tap for the first time. Let's also refactor this mouse down logic into a separate property to keep things clean. Okay, let's now work on the dot collision system. I wanna design this using Unity's collision system. And the way this will work is that the dot will have a trigger on it. And when the paddle enters that dot, we'll store the dot as a variable on the paddle. And when the paddle exits the dot, we'll remove that variable. That means when the player tap, we can check if the variable is null or not. And if it's not null, that means the player scored the dot, otherwise they missed. So let's add a circle collider on our dot and make it a trigger. Let's also add a box collider to the paddle and a rigid body as well to detect collision and make sure to set it to kinematic. Now we need a script to handle the collision. We could just put this logic in our motor script to be honest, but let's keep our component small. So let's add a new component to the paddle and call it dot detector. And here in the on trigger enter 2D method, we can just debug to see if we are getting the collision. And yeah, you can see that when the paddle touches the dot, we are getting the trigger log. Now, as mentioned earlier, we also need the on trigger exit method and a variable for the current dot. So when the paddle enters the trigger, we'll store the dot in our variable and we'll reset it back to null when we exit. And in the update method, we'll check for mouse down or tap. And if there is a current dot active, then we just destroy it and also register a success because we tapped at the right moment. But if the current dot is null, that means we tapped somewhere outside the dot. So we register a game over. The dot detection works fine, but you'll notice there's a bug that the game over is logged right at the start when we haven't even started moving. The detection system should only start when the game is running. So we need to again have a Boolean check for is running and only detect if the game is running. And if it's not running, then just set it to true and return. This is running code is duplicated in two components. So we'll refactor this later at some point. And let's move this component to proper folder. So let's stop here for today. And we have made some good progress. We have completed the anchored motor and the dot detection system and also made some small assets. So next time let's make our own event system and do something more than just debug logs. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.